welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway. I'm the author of this book, which funnily enough is called On This Day in Tudor History. Um, this book was actually the inspiration for this series of videos. Sorry if I'm a bit breathless, I'm still coping with this cough and it's just made me uh, very tight chested and very breathless. I'm going to read an extract from my book today for the 6th of April. On this day in history, the 6th of April 1590, Queen Elizabeth I's Principal Secretary Sir Francis Walsingham died at around the age of 58. Although he'd served the Queen for many years, he died in debt as he'd underwritten the debts of Sir Philip Sidney, his son-in-law. Walsingham was an incredibly important man during Elizabeth I's reign, being a statesman, private secretary, advisor, diplomat and spy master. And he probably saved the Queen's life many times by uncovering various plots against her. Elizabeth called him her Moor. He was born circa 1532, some say 1530, at Scadbury Park, Chislehurst in Kent and was the son of William Walsingham and Joyce Denny. His father died when he was an infant, and his mother married Sir John Carey, a relation of Mary Boleyn, Anne Boleyn's sister. Walsingham's father was Common Sergeant of London. His mother was related to Sir Anthony Denny, a member of Henry VIII's Privy Council, and his uncle, Sir Edmund, was Lieutenant of the Tower of London. Walsingham studied at King's College, Cambridge, and then, in 1550, he went abroad to continue his education. In 1552, he returned to England and enrolled at Gray's Inn, the Honourable Society of Gray's Inn, an inn of court. When Mary I came to the throne, Walsingham, who was a staunch Protestant, fled abroad and continued his law studies at the University of Padua, and then lived at Switzerland between 1556 and 1558. Elizabeth I's accession to the throne in 1558 meant that Walsingham could return to England. In 1559, his friendship with Sir William Cecil helped him to become a Member of Parliament for Banbury and then for Lyme Regis in 1563. In 1569, Walsingham was asked by William Cecil to investigate the Ridolfi plot and in 1570, Elizabeth I asked Walsingham to help the Huguenots in France negotiate with King Charles IX because he'd built up a good relationship with them. In the same year, he became the ambassador to France and it was to his house that Protestant refugees fled during the time of the St Bartholomew's, Bartholomew's Massacre and other troubles. Walsingham returned to England in 1573 and was rewarded for his hard work by being made the Queen's Principal Secretary, a position he shared, sorry I'm stumbling over my words because of my throat, a position he shared with Sir Thomas Smith until 1576 when Smith retired. In 1577 he was rewarded again with a knighthood and was trusted with special embassies in 1578 and 1581 to the Dutch and French courts. In the late 1570s, Walsingham was known for his opposition to the plans to encourage Elizabeth I to marry the Duke of Anjou and for his encouragement of military intervention in the Low Countries. In the mid to late 1580s, he and William Cecil worked on preparing England for war with Spain. Although Walsingham was an important diplomat and the Queen's principal secretary for a time, he is best known as Elizabeth I's spymaster and for his successful work uncovering plots against the Queen. He worked on uncovering the Ridolfi plot and put a stop to the Throckmorton or Throgmorton, and Babington plots. It was the Babington plot which convinced Elizabeth I of the need to execute Mary Queen of Scots and Walsingham was one of the advisers who encouraged her to take this course of action. So that just gives you a little bit of information about this fascinating man who was not only a private secretary, advisor, statesman and diplomat, but was also Elizabeth I's top spy master who uncovered those uh, important plots against Queen Elizabeth I. 
and he died on this day in Tudor history, the 6th of April 1590. Now you can subscribe to this channel, I always say this, but you can subscribe by just clicking that button there, hit the bell to be notified of videos going live, but be assured that I will be back every day of 2019 with uh, Tudor history events for you, whether they're births, marriages, deaths, executions, baptisms, coronations, battles, you name it, and I've got them for you this year. Um, I do hope you're enjoying these on this day in Tudor History events. I'm enjoying bringing them to you. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.